Nidhin, sir, can we start, sir? Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to respected principal, resource person, dean, HODs, teachers, and fellow mates. I feel a great pleasure to welcome all of you on this morning for the expert talk on My Story, motivational session by successful entrepreneur organized by Department of Biotechnology, Electronics and Communication Engineering, and Mechanical Engineering, the Oxford College of Engineering in association with Institutions Innovation Council, IIC. Our research person for the day is Dr. Nidin Shrikumar, Director and Chief Research Scientist, Acubits Invent. Sir has completed his postgraduate studies with MHRD Scholarship Gate in engineering, uh, Energy Engineering from the prestigious NIT, Trichy, with a research project in bioengineering in collaboration with CSIR, National Institute of Interdisciplinary Science and Technology, NIIST, Trivandrum. He joined his alma mater, Sri Chitra Tirumala College of Engineering as a faculty in bi biotechnology. He went on to pursue his doctoral research with MHRD scholarship at NIT Calicut in the area of bioenergy production from wastewater in collaboration with ex-chairman of Kerala State Pollution Control Board and CSIR NIIST. Sir was also involved with an agro-based startup as its research head in charge of design and establishment of research and production unit. After completing the doctoral research, he went back to Tamil Nadu as an associate professor in Department of Biotechnology. During this period, he undertook various industrial consultancy works. He has nine plus years of research experience and has many peer-reviewed publications in various areas like bioprocess, non-conventional energy resources, biomedical, healthcare, and environmental engineering. Now, I request our resource person, Dr. Nidhin Shrikumar, to address the gathering. Uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, a warm good morning to everyone. So um, on the outset, let me just thank uh, uh, Dr. Intu for providing this opportunity to interact with uh, all of you. I'm guessing I'm audible, right? Hello. Am I audible? Ah, yeah. The voice is not audible. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, am I audible or uh, is there any issue? Hello? Hello? You are audible, sir. Okay, I'm audible. Okay, fine. Uh, thank you for uh, confirming that. Like I was checking all the settings. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. So this, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, Akibit's event as well as uh, the journey so far. Okay. So uh, the brief introduction that was given. Uh, was actually uh, till my academia life. So uh, I think uh, the um, person who ha have given the introduction has done a pretty good job of introducing uh, uh, pretty nicely. So um, as 
uh, like uh, i can uh, feel each and every one of you because like i was also on the other side of the table uh some maybe like uh, 13 14 years back okay so uh during that time uh it was uh, i did not even imagine in my wildest dream that i'd be uh, like starting something of my own um like uh, creating some products generating some uh, value to the society and things like that so just like each and every one of you i was also uh, like enjoying my college days then uh, due to uh, peer pressure and uh, uh, pressure from my family i uh, did my uh, higher studies of post graduation uh, then uh, i thought like i'll uh, go into uh, tech uh, but uh but again <laughs> faith had other uh, ideas in uh, hand so uh, like i uh, went back to my alma mater uh, and uh, i had the wonderful opportunity of uh teaching in the same place i started my uh, engineering journey so uh, uh then after uh, maybe a brief time of uh, uh like serving at my alma mater i uh, went ahead uh, and uh, pursued my uh, doctoral studies and uh, during that time uh, this sort of idea struck me so uh, once i had the opportunity to interact with uh, really energetic people um, like uh, uh, really uh, interested students and all so uh, we had a small idea of uh, like starting a, a small uh manufacturing unit of our own for uh, uh, bio products so since i i mean uh, i was also from the uh, biotechnology background and uh, my masters and my training was on uh, uh, bio process engineering um so and i was really interested in uh, uh, design of uh, uh, fermenters and design of vessels and all so uh, this particular uh, startup uh was into producing bio fertilizers so how many of you uh, know what a bio fertilizer is uh, um doctor into uh, like uh, can it be an interactive session or is it going to be uh, a one way communication uh if you have a mic you can just pass it along so that uh, if anybody wants to ask anything you can can you hear us yes okay so now you can you can get an interactive session yeah thank you thank you for that because like uh, uh i'm fed up with uh, uh, like small meetings and all where one person will be talking and the other uh, so seven people will be completely listening to it so i just want uh, more interaction because i miss uh, the uh, academy uh, after coming to an industry uh, it's somewhat difficult to get hold of a group of people okay so uh, as i was saying uh, we started off uh, a small uh, manufacturing entity for bio fertilizers so uh, it was uh, in the state of kerala Uh, the place where I am from, uh, in the city of Trivandrum itself. So we had a lot of uh, micro business over uh, here. Like uh, it's not a very big farms or anything like that. So we targeted specific uh, like uh, niche market. So uh, this is basically for uh, people who are interested in starting a small. Um, like uh, what to say household farms or um, uh, terrace farming things like that so uh, we started off uh, pretty small uh, we had a small team of about three people and uh, uh, we fabricated our own reactors uh, during the downtime uh, we uh, like had a one person will be taking care of the marketing and the other person will be taking care of the uh, 
uh, what to say uh, production process and all. so it was a really small team uh, the small team is really, uh, wonderful um, so we kind of enjoyed it uh, then uh, due to certain uh, and uh, uh, time availability uh, i had to uh, amp out of it was like so i was on my third year of phd things so i could not manage all the time together so i like uh, uh, purposefully step down from the um, like in head position and i and i had to complete my phd uh, after which i was on an advisory um once the whole setup was uh, up and running um, we just need to give a uh, two troubleshootings and uh, overall process can run on its own so that's how uh, the whole uh, first my first venture uh, went uh, after which again uh, like uh, i was kind of jumping around so once uh, uh, i completed my phd i wanted to go back to academia then uh, i joined back at an amateur uh, after which uh, i joined another university as an associate professor then during that time i was taking up a lot of uh, consultancy activities so uh, like um, uh, in 2018 uh, i did about seven or eight consultancy projects one of the consultancy project uh, was related to and the company where i am uh, or the investors of the company where i am uh, working right now so uh, these people wanted a specific product uh, idea to be tested out so we, uh, i provided the technical backing for that concept and based on that experience uh, so uh, we thought of okay fine let's start off a uh, spin up a research and development team uh, and uh, register it as a startup so we started off in 2019 uh, um, to create uh, something uh, unique called as activity invent so uh, invent uh, was a uh, what to say kind of like a brain child of multiple people together so uh, i'm currently uh, heading activity project as its director and one of the founders um, from there uh, i have been focused completely on activity segment so i'll give you a brief of what activity segment is so that you understand um, the journey a bit better so uh, may i share my screen Uh, is it visible yes yes okay so uh acubit acubit invent uh, is a privately funded uh, research and product development company so uh, what we do is basically we have uh, uh, we completely work on interdisciplinary research so uh, we do not have any sort of uh, government funding or grants uh, per se as of yet it's a completely privately funded uh, r&d entity uh, we are a registered uh, like uh, recognized research uh, company from the government of india as well as uh, from uh, uh, kerala startup mission so what we do is uh like we try to develop uh, concepts which can be converted into products so it's called as translational research so we do not undertake any sort of basic research activities the entirety of the uh, r and d activities that we are uh, undertaking is on translational research side only so it's kind of like uh, the cat face of google scholar we try to stand on the shoulders of giants so we take up uh, the uh, basic science research which was done by uh, researchers from all across the world 
and we try to convert it into a product. So that product development phase is what we undertake. And we also have in uh, in house projects uh, which are uh, like uh, taking up a lot of our time. So these are the four teams that we currently have. So we have a bioinformatics team, uh, completely focused on um, like uh, in silico activities. Uh, we do have a nanotechnology team uh, who is focusing on uh, the particular flagship project that we are working on. Uh, then we have uh, molecular biology as well as organic chemistry team also. So uh, we have uh, a lot of projects uh, of success. We have about 19 active research projects ongoing. We have published uh, more than 20 research articles. Uh, we have multiple research collaborations with a lot of uh, university uh, research institutes, uh, etc. And the current team strength of Akibit Singman is about uh, 50, uh, of which we have about uh, seven uh, uh, like, uh, postdoctoral uh, researchers, and uh, um, the rest of them are uh, post uh, or masters researchers or postgraduate researchers. And we also have uh, multiple patents in our mix. We have one international patent as well as we have uh, two Indian patents. So that is our business model. We convert the technology or we convert the uh, technical know-how into a patent. And this patent will be uh, given to any um, large scale industry or a contract manufacturing organization to develop it as a product. So the product development phase is what we do. So we consider ourselves as a think tank. So if there is a problem, we take up that problem. Uh, we try to uh, find solutions for that problem and we wrap it up in a, uh, uh, a detailed uh, uh, protocol, uh, and a uh, product portfolio, and we supply to our clients. So this is how we open it. Okay, so uh, is there any um, doubts or uh, uh, like questions that you have so far? Like I want it to be an interactive session, otherwise it's going to be kind of like a radio. Any questions? It can be anything, it can be... So this is kind of like an, uh, like I was told that it was going to be uh, an inspirational uh, or a motivational talk or something like that. But if there is no response from your side, like, uh, then there is no uh, like value giving uh, happening over here. So I'll be really happy if you have any sort of questions. Okay, uh, let's let's move forward. If you have any questions, feel free to stop me at any point of time. Uh, so I'll give you a glimpse of uh, what our teams do, and uh, I'll give you a glimpse of one of our flagship products as well. So we have uh, our nanotechnology team, which is the largest team right now. Uh, we work on uh, multiple uh, products. One of the uh, patented uh, products that we are working on is the development of uh, sensors. So we undertake uh, uh, sensor development for different applications. So we have uh, about three clients for this particular project alone, including Cipla Pharmaceuticals. Uh, so for Cipla, we are developing a breath analyzer. And uh, there are other companies for uh, uh, development of sensors for plant applications. So uh, then uh, the nanotech uh, team is uh, like uh, uh, undertaking uh, synthesis of nanoparticles, uh, 3D printing uh, of substrate, lab on a chip concept, and things like that. So then we have a molecular biology team. Um, the team is uh, quite small right now because, think, as you all understand, we uh, like work on genetic engineering where. Uh, we specifically work on CRISPR and development of a uh, GNN based um, A algorithm for in silico biomolecular studies. So it's kind of like uh, multiple projects. So all of our projects as a are in the discipline. 
so even if we are having different different teams for one particular project people from multiple uh, technical background will be working together so that is how uh, we try to bring about the um, multidisciplinary uh, approach so what we found so far is like uh, when you have people with different background uh, it is easy to solve problems so because like each and every person will be able to contribute uh, in a different manner so we have uh, currently from our molecular biology team uh, we have uh, gene editing capabilities uh, for prokaryotes and eukaryotes and we are trying to establish a, a cell culture facility of our own uh, because like uh, these things will take time <clears throat> so uh, this is our um, like uh, capabilities with regard to molecular biology and organic chemistry is another uh, team which is uh, like uh, performing really well so we undertake uh, synthesis uh, we take i mean uh, we generate peptides we generate small molecules uh, organic nanoparticles uh, we also undertake prototyping of uh, uh, like uh, products uh, from a chemistry perspective then uh, we also uh, do phytochemistry as well as nutritional based research then um, informatics team uh, which is one of the uh, one most uh, uh high performing teams i should say because they like uh, we have a very good uh, uh, in silico capability so we have a uh, multiple servers in our mix we have a uh, uh, lot of uh, computational power in our disposal so we do take up uh, uh, genomics proteomics and uh, other uh, modeling related activities uh, we participated in the uh, covid 19s uh, so recently uh, during this uh, pandemic uh, the government of india uh, the principal scientific advisor uh, office floated um, a um, drug discovery hackathon so i'm proud to say that we were one of the finalists uh, from the whole country so at that point of time our uh, bioinformatics team was really small and uh, our informatics team was one of the first teams which got established so um, we competed against uh, giant institutes like uh, csl labs um, like uh, uh, icmr institutes and uh, uh, other uh, central universities and we were one of the uh, eight finalists selected and uh, we took up about four uh, problem statements and we like uh, got selected for three uh, in the final so Uh, that is the technical capability of uh, uh, informatics team. Uh, then uh, let me introduce uh, one of our flagship products that we have generated. So this particular uh, product is uh, patented, and we have applied it for international patent in multiple countries as well. So I'll give you a gist of what it is. Um, um volatiles are something which are released from any living organism so be it uh, like plant cells or animal cells or even microorganisms volatiles are being released so uh, volatile organisms is one of the field of study where based on the release of volatiles we are uh, like able to understand the physiological state of a um, biological system so we are trying to explore that area so this particular sensor uh, so this is one of the uh, like uh, base stories where we started off so we wanted to understand the um, chemical signals or chemical language of biology so uh, the easiest method is to understand the chemical signals so um, we can cut open a cell and understand its uh, working that's an uh, destructive step but if you want to um, like uh, understand or have a proper uh, communication with biological cell you need to understand it from a non destructive method so that's where uh, this uh, volatile detection comes into play so we try to uh, like detect individual volatiles uh, with very high sensitivity and selectivity so that uh, the Uh, we will be able to map out all the volatiles which are being released 
at different individual concentration levels as well. So the advantage of that is the, the fingerprint volatiles we will be able to. That's where our uh, like uh, AI counterpart comes into play. So uh, Acupuncture is actually uh, a tech company, uh, which is our uh, one of our major funder. Uh, I should say. So uh, we have uh, AI capabilities. So we have our own uh, um, large language model, and we have our own algorithms which are developed back using our own uh, own tracer data. So uh, this particular AI algorithm will be able to predict the uh, physiological state of each and every system which we are trying to detect. That is the overall gist of uh, like, uh, project track. So the concept is that we will be able to identify uh, different different physiological state changes of any biosystem. So uh, to put it into perspective, uh, the um, we are able to detect multiple volatiles with very high sensitivity and sensitivity with a very short area. So currently, uh, we have not started. We have not even started miniaturization. Uh, so the first step uh, with the base level of uh, miniaturization itself, uh, we only require one square centimeter of sensor, which which will be able to um, uh, like uh, detect about hundred volatiles. So to put it into perspective, uh, so it's uh, any kind of setup, we have one millimeter square area for dedicated for one. So it's going to be an array of uh, 100 uh, individual sensors. The total array is going to take up only one square centimeter. That's the uh, like miniaturization uh, that we have currently uh, achieved. And uh, um, the cost of product is really, really low. One square centimeter of sensor is going to uh, uh, cost only about uh, 40 Indian rupees. And we currently have a, a huge database of uh, 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 like old data. So we currently have a database of about 1,000 plus human VOCs and uh, uh, 800 plus VOCs. So this VOC database is actually uh, the treasure trove which we are working on. So this database is actually what is training the uh, AI algorithm so that it becomes better and better over, over time. So, uh, currently, we have a sensitivity range of about uh, 9 ppb, and we are trying to pull it all the way down to a part per billion. Dollars. And detection speed is uh, lesser than 5 seconds. So, currently, we have achieved about 1.5 seconds. And our AI algorithm is uh, really, really good. Applications of this particular product is there as strongholders. Uh, we are able to detect uh, uh, like this is just a six of uh, like basic application which uh, came to my mind. Uh, 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 volatile based on volatile, we are we can find out n number of applications. We are finding out new and new applications on a day to day basis. So there are uh, like the ideas coming up uh, on a uh, day to day basis itself for different different applications. So one of the ideas that we initially had was on monitoring of perishables. So uh, fruits, vegetables, fast food, meat, uh, fish items, anything be refrigerated, be adulterated, anything we'll be able to identify uh, the level of adulteration, uh, or like the period from which it started to its decay process. So every material, once it is removed from its uh, base environment, it is going to start its decay process, and we'll be able to or uh, with a very high accuracy, say that okay, this particular food uh, like seven days before today. So uh, and it will be staying fresh for maybe like another two to four days. Imagine the possibilities of that. Um, then on a, another application level is uh, detection of plant stress, uh, both abiotic and biotic stress. Uh, so one of the application levels that we're working with. So uh, we are actually working on uh, currently the client product coming on Adam. So there are a lot of uh, diseases which Adam, Adam being a cash crop, uh, the loss is actually pretty huge. So if we are 
able to identify uh, before any of the symptoms are showing up. We will be able to uh, control the uh, disease, the onset of disease. That is uh, one application. We also can use the product on air quality monitoring. We can detect pheromones. Uh, we can identify plant microbiome interactions. Uh, we can also identify human microbiome interactions. That is where we work on different projects. Uh, so these are some of the applications that we are working on. Specific um, healthcare application. Uh, one key client that we are having is uh, so uh, for Cipla, we are generating a breath measure. Uh, Aaron, uh, we will be identifying a unique VOC fingerprint from the exiled breath, uh, where uh, using that data, we will be able to predict the disease condition, uh, the extent of disease condition, the onset of disease condition, and it can be used as an early diagnosis or a screening method. I'm not going to claim that it's going to be a gold standard, but it needs working. Only we can use it in training methodology. So uh, another uh, application that we're working on is uh, wearable integration. So due to the small size, this particular sensor can be integrated into um, smart wearables to provide continuous. So, um, in that, uh, okay, I guess most of you all are already using smart watches. Right. So your smart watches are usually packed with sensors. They usually have uh, like optical sensors for detection of uh, blood flow rate. Uh, it will have sensors for detection of uh, um, like, uh, dissolved oxygen level in your uh, blood screen. And then, um, uh, like if you're having an uh, app device, it's having an algorithm which can um, heart rhythm, heart rhythms and its uh, orders. So all these things are already in existence. So uh, imagine all these technologies are actually uh, using simple concepts. Like it's an optical sensor. It's a pretty simple sensor. Uh, the value that it is going to give is actually huge. So there is no idea which is small. So even the simplest of the ideas can create a, a huge impact. So uh, imagine such a technology being integrated into a smart device so that it will give out constant, uh, what to say, uh, state where the physiological state continuously monitored. So that even before you start to have any symptoms, say, for example, if you're having a cough. So even before you are having a cough, you will be giving. I mean, you'll be give, you can be given an alert stating that okay, you are in an allergen-rich environment. Uh, this is going to give you a uh, like a problem if you are overexposed. So people with pollen allergies, people with uh, uh, allergic responses to certain environmental pollutants, all these things will be uh, having a kind of like a protective uh, bubble around your uh, body. That's the concept that we are working on. Uh, okay, so this might not be interesting to you guys. So we also undertake a lot of services uh, for different different teams. We undertake the uh, sequence analysis. Uh, we have a lot of uh, downtime between our experiments. So we try to uh, utilize that for uh, the benefit of the research community. We undertake a, a contract. Uh, uh, manufacturing of small or high uh, high value products like nanoparticles in small quantity. So we do not cater to any sort of industry for our manufacturing right now. We only cater to research community because, like, it is one way of giving back to the community that uh, we take a lot of information from. Uh, so these are our services uh, that uh, we offer. Uh, this might be useful for people who are into uh, research, people who are uh, working on specific research projects and things like that. And uh, we provide research assistance, we provide uh, consultancy services and uh, uh, professional research services. Uh, we are open for uh, product idea discussions. Uh, like we support startups, people who are having uh, ideas so, and do not have. Uh, like a way to uh, materialize that idea. 
we are here to provide uh, assistance or provide support for that as well. Because like uh, startup from biotech area is really, really small. Uh, like we can find maybe like 99% of startups are from tech side and very, very small fraction of startups only are from uh, bio background. So we tend or we want to change that uh, mixture. So that's where, that's why we started off this particular uh, like, uh, uh, system called as research assistance. Wherein we provide uh, like pathways. So if you have an idea, you have a problem, and you have a solution. So if you do not have a, like a solution to a problem, that's a different story altogether. If you have an idea, we'll help you to materialize that idea. We'll give you all the support. We'll give you uh, what to do. We can have uh, detailed discussions on how to move forward. So this is a purely uh, like uh, entrepreneurial development kind of thing that we do. So we currently provide support for uh, maybe like three uh, small entities uh, where we provide technical guidance uh, to people who are really interested in taking things to the next level. So this is uh, the team that we are currently having. So this is just a small uh, Some are from the team right now. Okay, so that's all about uh, um, we are currently situated in Fire 360 Life Sciences Park. It's about 3,000, uh, no, 4,500 square feet uh, pure research uh, lab. So we do all sort of uh, tinkering, uh, uh, testing out all these areas over here. So that's about activity uh, invent and my journey. So uh, this is somewhat uh, this is something from another uh, usual uh, model journey. So we are focused purely on uh, research. So this is uh, slightly different than your everyday uh, startups and things like that. Yeah. So that is pretty much it for my questions. I'm open to discussions. And I thank uh, Dr. Intu for the opportunity. And now it is all up to you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Anybody has any queries regarding startup entrepreneurship or anything related to biotechnology, high studies? Or if you want to ask anything about their internship. Anybody? Come on, guys. This is a unique opportunity. Uh, I'm guessing all of you are from five. What? Uh, is everybody over here from five years? Final years and third semester. Seventh and third semester. Seventh and third semester. Okay. So, what is your uh, future plan? At least. Future plan. Seventh semester. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sorry, I could not hear that. Okay. Ah, uh, need to uh, like uh, pinpoint each and every one. So no issues, uh, Doctor. The thing is, like, you should have interactions. You should at least have an interaction with your seniors, so that you get an uh, idea of what the uh, like uh, market is right now. So even if you are going to higher studies, what is your ultimate goal? You should have a, a vision in your mind. Um. Like I'm, 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 I'm frankly saying that I did not have a, a idea during college days to do so many things. But if you start, uh, if you have an idea uh, which you can materialize or which you want to materialize, this is the right time because after some time, the most valuable resource is going to be time. Okay, so whatever uh, like uh, thing that you are going to have, you are. Going to be in short of time, so I'll uh, ask each and every one of you to at least have an interaction with your seniors who are out in the world right now. People who are in a classroom are actually really protected, so you will not have any sort of uh, like um, external uh, understanding of how the job market is or uh, what you need to do. Or see, higher studies is again uh, an interesting area. So it, you should select your higher studies based on what you want to do. Okay. So uh, I I'll say frankly that one of the co-founders have a technical uh, college dropout. Okay. So he does not even have a bachelor's degree. It does not matter so long as you have a vision. Okay. So um, again, so if you want to pursue a career in research. Higher studies, or uh, it's not about a degree; it's about your training. So, if you do a, I mean, um, like a master's degree or, or a, a research degree, what you are gaining is basically an experience on how to do research. See, uh, I'll tell you, uh, uh, like as it was introduced, I am having a like a training in biotechnology. Then I went ahead into bioenergy. Then uh, currently, I'm working on sensor technology. Okay, so all these are completely unrelated things. Okay, but again, since I'm having different different uh, training in different different domains, it is easier for you to learn new things, and you'll be able to identify okay uh, niche areas where you can put your uh, um, your training into. Uh, I'm working on uh, material which is completely different than what I studied in my uh, bachelor or even my master. So uh, learning new things is something which you have to keep your uh, mind open to. So I I totally understand that some of you guys are already feeling that okay uh, when I'm completing my B.Tech I'm not going to touch any book in my life ever again. So that's not uh, how you can uh, what, progress in life. So even if you are going into uh, a tech, so I can uh, vouch for that because like I'm also in the uh, directed board of a, a technology company. So uh, I can say that people who are working with us have to be updated on a daily basis because technology world is changing like anything. So if you are say if you are saying that okay I understand I I know HTML coding I'm going to uh, not I'm not going to learn anything new I'm going to uh, like uh, be a HTML coder you will not get a job it's very difficult so but people who are actually uh, continuously learning so if you are an HTML coder okay fine if you understand CSS fine go to the next step JSON go to the next step how you can uh, uh, automatically code things. So you have to be completely uh, updated on a day-to-day -day basis. It can be any area. 
if you don't want to work in biotechnology it is fine but ultimately your education has to mean something so that is where you'll have to put your effort into so uh, you can find a uh, new areas where you are really interested in there may be who are really interested in a logical coding so there are people who are really interested in fab uh, mathematics so you can get into that area so it does not uh, your uh, basic is not just from exploring your degree is just going to be a screening methodology wherein an employer is going to be uh, like uh, requiring a specific skill set that's where your degree comes into play if you are do, going to do something of your own all these things does not matter so my simple suggestion is is for you each and every one of you to interact with your seniors it as much as pusher that you are Get uh, uh, as much as information as possible. So that is the only way to move forward because otherwise we will be left alone. So if you have any questions, you can either uh, ask right now for that. Good morning, sir. Uh, I think the obviously. Huh? Sorry. Sorry. Are there any requirements of opening in your company? A really good question. So, uh, as I was mentioning, uh, we are currently in the so we look at uh, like a specific set. Currently, we work on multiple product ideas. So, we might start expanding from 2024. So, there might be openings in the next year uh, in Akibit's invent. Uh, but uh, for the next two or three months, there might not be any openings. As a job, so you can uh, approach us for internships. That's a different story. How many months internship you are providing? Oh yeah, that is completely flexible. So we have not uh, fixed any um, timeline for uh, internships. So you can actually visit our website. We have given a detailed uh, uh, brochures and things like that in our website. Uh, so currently we offer uh, internships as short as a week to as long as maybe like three to four months also. Again, it depends on um, our availability. So we do a like a six months of planning uh, on a semi-annual basis. So based on each and every uh, like uh, uh, review cycle, we'll float uh, internships opportunities. So currently, we can take up maybe like uh, till March. We can take up uh, two months or three months internships at the max. Thank you for that. Emerging, sorry. Yeah, thank you. So to answer your question, um, 
uh, biotechnology and experimental research is one area you can sit down uh, is one area where um, it is going to be future proof so experiments and uh, actual uh, uh, hardcore research is something which is not going to be taken up by uh, ai really soon it's not going to uh, be taken up by ai so emerging areas is one uh, there are a lot of emerging areas in biotechnology it is uh, going to start all the way from uh, drug discovery so um, healthcare is one area specifically to say um, i don't know uh, your curriculum but still uh, immunotherapies uh, is one area which is going to revolutionize then genetic modifications is one area which is going to blow up okay so um, if you are uh, having a training on um, genetic uh, modifications um, that is one area that is definitely going to be expanding like anything then uh, another area on uh, biotechnology front is yeah uh, bioprocessing so uh, synthesis of uh, biologically compatible materials uh, then uh, what else uh, yeah then ai integration into um, experimental data is one area if you are interested in uh, say um, utilizing uh, artificial intelligence that is one area if you are see uh, the job is not going to be vanished so people are going to be replaced by people who know ai it is not the other way around uh, ai is just going to be a support system it is not going to completely take up all the uh, what jobs so there is going to be a major shift in the uh, job market uh, more and more people who are understanding the uh, ai or understanding the uh, recent technologies will be uh, given a priority so that is what is going to change if you are uh, really interested in uh, lab work uh, then i'll suggest you to look into look more into genetic engineering then if you are slightly into engineering aspect you can uh, look into bioprocess engineering uh, fabrication or manufacturing of uh, biocompatible materials um, then uh, yeah the world is moving away from animal testing so if you are interested in uh, alternative uh, models that is one area where you can uh, where there is a huge potential in Thank you, sir, for the insight to various projects and applications. I extend my sincere thanks to our honored resource person, Dr. Nidin Shri Kumar, for taking time from his busy schedule and for sharing his expertise talk. My gratitude also goes to Principal and to Dr. Manjunath BK, Head of Biotechnology Department, for his efforts in organizing this event. I extend my deep sense of appreciation to all the faculties and fellow mates for their active involvement. Once again, thank you everyone for making this session a great success. So uh, I thank uh, the uh, institute and uh, the uh, HOD uh, for giving me this opportunity, and I thank uh, Dr. Intuleka for inviting me. So thank you everyone for uh, your patience. One hour. Thank you. Thank you.